Welcome to the Adam Rothstein Hockey Podcast. This is your podcast for all things hockey. On this podcast, we talk about past history to the modern day and what you can do to grow the sport. I am your host, Adam Rothstein. All right, let's get to the show. Welcome in, everybody. This is episode number 86. So today we are talking about TV scheduling and season structure. The 2022-2023 uh, season, um, many of the games came on True TV or TNT. And, and it wasn't really until this season that I know what True TV was. And it's like, like, like I, I don't watch it other than for hockey. I didn't even know it, it existed. And, um, and I do think that has been a bit of an issue when it comes to marketing the NHL. It's that you're showing up on channels that many people don't have. Um, I talked about this in my bonus episode, and if you are a paid subscriber, you probably already listened to this, but uh, here it goes. The Stanley Cup Finals was only seen, on average, by... Less than two and a half million people, at least at least in the United States, Canada. I think it was the numbers were actually about the same, but relative to their population, it's actually um, it's probably closer to about ten percent. It's actually probably eight. I mean, there's like nearly forty million people in Canada, and or something like that, and. And, and to be frank about this, it's like, that is pathetic. You couldn't get, um, or maybe they got less than five, okay, they get less than five million people, you know? That's like, it, most of North America is not watching this. And, and the fact that the NHL couldn't get 1% of the United States this time around to watch the Stanley Cup final... It, it baffles me, and and you know these these are households, by the way. So, okay, maybe maybe accounting for everything, you might have had a million. Uh, I'm sorry, one percent of the country watch it, but but there were hockey fans of mine on Facebook on, and and people that I played hockey with. Uh, that I've been calling and talking to saying that, oh yeah, no, I was just not interested in the game. And it's like, I, t- I either turned it off or it was not competitive. It wasn't entertaining. And I think the NHL kneecapped themselves um, in the, in the kneecapped themselves, or at least that's what one of my friends said. I have to agree with them. I have to agree with them. And uh, let's, and and also, um, the fact that uh, there's not really a Wednesday night rivalry anymore uh, with Doc Emmerich that he, like I I'm not really seeing that is not showing up on like you know it it used to be that way on NBC Sports or versus uh, if you if you're an old schooler like myself. Um, it, there was Wednesday night rivalries. There was uh, Flyers Penguins or Penguins Capitals or some something like that. Growing up, or it would be, um, or it would be the Red Wings and Chicago or something uh, on NBC Sports as well. Uh, and, and it was Comcast Sportsnet too. Uh, now, um, here's one thing that I'll add is that. I don't know the numbers of my channels on on the TV. I don't know. I, I don't know. You could put, you know, you could ask me a million times and I wouldn't know what the numbers are. And, and that's another thing. TV has gotten so complicated too. It's not like the olden days when you could like just switch to channel 45 and there was Comcast Sportsnet. Or 42, and there was ESPN, or 43, ESPN 2, or 59, Nickelodeon. It, 
you know, it was simple two digit numbers, basic cable. You knew what you were going to get growing up and, and you didn't have to like, just, you know, have memorize like a thousand, whatever it was as well. And, and it was just simple too. It's like, go over to your friend's house. Oh, he's got Comcast too. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's the same number. It's the same number too that travels with you. And I don't know if someone has satellite or direct TV or Comcast or, well, now Xfinity or, or the Dish Network. I don't know it anymore. It's, you know, and, and even when it was there, you know, it was still simple. Like, it was easy to remember. It was never more than two digits most of the time. That's another thing that has bothered me, too. Um, Because I don't normally watch TV. Other than this sport. Um, So there is that. Um, ABC could have picked up the game. Could have picked up the finals. for The Stanley Cup finals. And I think that was a really big mistake on the NHL's part. Not getting this on any of the main networks. 60 million households were only able to watch this and and they still had and they only got 2.47 people out of that 60 million. That's like it's like 5% of that and for the country and Canada you add those numbers up and and you're like just at that point you know, it, it, it's not looking pretty. You know, they got at least, I think between both countries, if you, you took the U.S.'s population of like 340 million and, you know, the 40 million in Canada and then you have just like about 4.8 million, you know, it's, it's, it's a little over 1%, but, you know, still, you know, if you're running any major sport and you walk away with 1% of the country watching it, shouldn't you feel ashamed? The NBA was like getting, got tens of millions of views, and at least in the United States, not to account for the fact that Serbia was watching this and some other countries were watching this as well. And of course, Canada was watching that one as well because of the Raptors. And, but it's like they they apparently just put it on the main networks and and of course you're going to get a good return on it you put this on true tv a channel that no one knows what the hell it is of course you're going to get a low return on it so there is that um the scheduling um october 3rd is mean girls day and i say that because um we should start the season, you know, on October 3rd or October 1st or late September at the earliest. Um, but but at, at the very latest, you start this on October the 9th. Why the hell are you competing with the NBA at this point? You know, you should have the... You should have you know, the fortitude, the mental fortitude to realize that you're not going to beat them. And and game five, by the way, um, was on the, you know, it, it was in in direct competition with the NBA's uh, game five. And, uh, and if they both went to game seven, they would have had the, they both would have, you know, the NHL would have finished last. And, and I want to go out on a bang too. I want to see the. I want to. I want my team to finish first because traditionally most teams didn't play in June, and it's like, oh yeah, Caps don't play a game in May, and that was or they don't play in June or whatever. Um, uh, and and the joke was yeah they yeah they're a good team they're fun to watch only problem is they don't play in May and and the joke was like they were only winning like thirty games a season at best and and they were struggling and they almost moved out of DC 
and they would have been the second team to do so in about a decade and and that was and that was a joke at the time <sighs> fortunately for me that never happened and had that happened um there's a lot of kids that would have never played hockey that i know of they probably go and uh dominate lacrosse so there's that the so the scheduling issue um of just coming on to early to early october late september it would benefit and and then the nba can start later and even though they'll be playing in the same arenas and all that jazz you know they're still not going to be in direct competition because the finals is going to be over and you'll have like the third round begin once the finals are over the third round of the nba will be over for you know at the very latest at the very earliest it'll be over but but the stanley cup finals would have already been completed by then and and i think gary bettman needs to assess this idea as well um and and let's talk about some let's just move some of the games to uh friday and Saturday, more of the games on Fridays and Saturdays, and and just have day ta- daytime games on the on, mostly on the weekends, because because I mean think about it, it's seven p.m. In, and unless it's hockey night in Canada, you know most people are going to be out on the strip. They're going to be they're not going to be going to you know. Most of them won't be going to a seven o'clock hockey game, um, NHL game. But I, but I, okay, I take that back. Most of the, most people who are hockey fans will go there and it'll sell out, whether it's Madison Square Garden or Staples Center or whatever. That'll happen. But I think in like the smaller markets, such as Sunrise and and I don't want to necessarily say St. Louis. On this, but certainly Arizona is not going to be doing that. At you know, the people of Arizona aren't going to be going out on the strip at seven o'clock. Aren't going to be going to the games at seven o'clock at night, uh, local time. They're out at the strip. They voted for a wasteland to over a good facility, a good arena for the Coyotes. You know. You know, some of these markets are not going to be up for it. And and honestly, you're more energetic during the day than you are at night. But I, but don't get rid of the Saturday night games or the Friday night games. But anything coming on a Sunday night, it, just, just, I'm sorry. No, I don't care what you think. If you can, you know, if you think it's a good idea, like having a game later than four o'clock local time, and then just broadcasting that wherever. People need to go to work. People have school in the morning. And and if you're going to have a game on Sunday night at 7 o'clock, any local time, shame on you. Because let's get these games played. Let's get eyeballs on this. And, and kids, too. They, they love this sport, okay? They love this game, and they want to watch it. And it's like... Oh no! It's past your bedtime, Timmy. You can't go. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Go to bed, and and Timmy doesn't get to see the end of the game. This, you know, and that also is another, you know, that's potential fan loss of a game. It's not optimal to watch. Let's put some afternoon games up at uh, on Sunday and. And some afternoon games on Saturday, too. And anything coming... And New Year's Day, don't start it later than 1. Start it at 1. Let's make sure that everyone gets out of the stadium and or any stadium series that we have. Start those games at 1. And so they can get home, get and just relax for a bit, have dinner, and then go to work the next day. That is not an, an unreasonable thing to bring up, and I think that's a fair point. Man, 
So um, the local um, networks, uh, Bally Sports, and maybe they're coming on whatever local Fox Sports there is as well. But I have Bally Sports down here, and uh, then there's NBC Sports or NBC, NBCSN or whatever it's called now in the Mid-Atlantic, and you have your Yes Network, and you have your MSG Network. All those networks are uh, broadcasting to bring you hockey games, and 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 I think they do a good job for the most part. You know, they're not overcomplicated. It's fine. You know, they are not going to put something on in its place during that time. Bally Sports Sun is pretty good, and then you have two Bally Sports down here to deal with the Rays, to deal with the Lightning. And the other one deals with the Panthers, the Marlins, the the Dolphins are more go on NFL on Fox, so that's still pretty good, and 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 you don't have to worry too much about that. The Islanders, um, gee, I don't, I don't even know much about the Islanders <laughs> about that or how they do it in Long Island. Uh, the one thing with uh, MSG is that, you know, they're not direct. They don't have to necessarily compete with New Jersey for that slot, and they'll wind up playing each other several times a year, whether they are in the playoffs or not. Now, now the Sabers, yeah, they have it, have something similar, and they just have one network for the Bills and the Sabers. So it's fine up there in Buffalo. I th- the local networks have did a better job of broadcasting games than I think True TV ever could, and and I saw more ads for the Panthers during their regular season than I did for the Stanley Cup Finals, and that was uh, another thing that kneecapped uh, you know the viewership of this. I didn't see any commercial for this for the NBA Finals. I I didn't see it. Okay, I just did not see it. No advertising during the the NBA Finals. No advertising for this. And it's like, why aren't you advertising with the NBA Finals on their, with their commercials? Or are you in some non-compete agreement that I don't know about? Why the heck was this not um, there? Like, like just just be honest with me at this point. There was no reason why you shouldn't have been advertising more. And and let's say you can't advertise with the NBA. Okay, fine. I didn't see this much with the MLB. I didn't see, you know, much with you know, you know, yeah, you should have been advertising this in in like Chicago with with the Cubs or something. And and it should have been like or like a big city where, you know, a lot of hockey fans are going to be. And you don't advertise with them? There are, there are 14 million, there's like 15 million people in the New York City area. Okay, 15 million people. And you don't put out advertisements um, on MSG. And you can't get 1 million of those eyeballs. Not, not, not for the entire country, but those eyeballs... What are you doing? What are you doing, Batman? What are you doing? You know, it, it's a shame, too. I, It's a shame. Um, relocations on the, on the potential Hartford Whalers, um, currently the Arizona Coyotes. Um, did you see the, the latest report of that the Coyotes might go to Hartford? That would be incredible. Now, I've got to admit that Salt Lake City has certainly managed to get into the loop of this conversation. Now, they're not going to be out in the desert. They're out in the cold. They're out in ski country. They're out in in ex-Olympic City country, essentially. They're out there, and they've got so much to... And and they get they they could get their arena NHL 
sized ready. Now, I don't think it's necessarily going to be as good as, you know, the Honda Center or I'm sorry, the Toyota Center or the Honda Center necessarily, or it's going to be, or it's not going to be like Wells Fargo or Madison Square Garden, certainly not. But, but I think uh, Salt Lake City has certainly earned themselves in that conversation as well. Hartford Whalers comeback. Yeah, there's that. And, and I'm like just searching this up right now on this. So apologies here. So I'll keep this short. Um, some say the they won't return um, as well and as well I'll, I think I'll, all right I'll pin this I'll pin that story uh, in the comments below or in the description or wherever this is being broadcasted as well so there's that I do think that the um, that we're gonna see so much um, you know, there's going to be more talks of relocation, too. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was open to the idea of an NHL team coming to Kansas City, which, you know, it's kind of odd because, you know, the eyeballs would be somewhat off of him to see this new thing, too. But but I don't think he—but he's not putting up the money as far as I'm concerned. But I, I think the relocation of the— the Coyotes needs to happen. Gary Bettman, you know, going in guns a blazing into the desert is is preposterous. You know, you know, it's like whatever I think it was like Sam Elliott or whoever the comedian was, like doing the skit of uh you know, you know, you want to stop world hunger, you know, stop sending them food. You know, Get just get a U-Haul truck, pack your shit, and and we'll make one trip. You know, nothing grows out here in the desert, sort of thing. That's that's the logic I'm coming with here. And 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 hockey's not growing too. And and they were playing. They, I mean, if you saw the locker room of what the Coyotes are playing or what Arizona State is, rather, I've I've been in better locker rooms. And I, and I was playing ECHA hockey, mind you, and actually, well, dressing on the occasion and getting very, getting literally no playing time. Uh, so there was that. But, but I was in the locker room with these guys, and, and I can tell you that, that the locker rooms in the ECHA or the ACHA were much better than this now. And we're not even NCAA. Two, we weren't even NCAA at the time. The, the locker rooms at Arizona State for, for their respective hockey team, the Sun Devils, I think, uh, they certainly, they are, it is pathetic what it is down there. You bring the team to Hartford. You bring the team to Quebec. You have, you, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have a loyal fan base. You're going to have that loyal fan base. It's going to be ready to go. You don't have to worry about putting them in, you know, New Orleans and, and you know, it being a total flop or something or bringing it back to Atlanta and being a total flop. You know, Gary Bettman just wants hockey to be out in the desert. And I don't understand this, you know, I thought this guy was a businessman. I thought he wanted to make a profit and he didn't want to take a risk. When the people of Arizona don't want a hockey team, get them the fuck out. It's not that difficult, okay? It's not that difficult to understand. Put them in, you know, okay. The idea of San Diego was also floating around a bit. And it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Put them in San Diego at this point, even though they're going to be competing directly with the Kings and the Ducks, it's got to be fucking better than keeping them, you know, in Tempe or even them moving in with the Suns at this point. Or like, I'm sorry, Glendale or not Glendale, California, um, Scottsdale or wherever, 
you know, keeping them in Arizona, it's got to be better than that. It has to be. And Tempe didn't want them. Tempe is a growing city. And they didn't want a professional hockey team. And unless the Arizona Coyotes move in with the Suns, you know, they don't have an NHL-sized arena and they're playing another season in a college rink. You know, you know, and a college rink that, by the way, is not as high quality as some of, you know, that even UConn's, UConn, University of Connecticut's hockey rink is much nicer than that, and and the big ha- and and Michigan's hockey rink is bigger than that. Well, Michigan, yeah, University of Michigan, and and maybe even the Spartans. Who knows? There's no reason to keep the Coyotes there. Try something with Utah, and I know you're going to be competing more directly with the Avalanche and the Golden Knights, and the Golden Knights coming off. Their Stanley Cup victory might not be the best look for, you know, might not be, you're going to, they're going to struggle in Salt Lake if personally, you know, with, with audience capture at least, not necessarily game wise, but they'll have their struggles as well there. Put them in the East. Tell the Red Wings they need to go back to the Western Conference. I don't care what they think. They can they can kick rocks for all I care at this point. Never was a big fan of Detroit as well. Making jokes and stuff. I don't... Th- there are definitely times when I think that Gary Bettman does this on purpose. That he loses money as well. It is... You know... The Coyotes can't sell out that arena. They, they, they just can't do it. No matter what they do. They can't do it. And it's a shame. Because I want to see... You know, would I love to see Tempe get a great facility? And, you know, not a waste dump area. And, and just have them rebuild that area. And that district... Yes, and and I've never even been to Arizona, by the way. I've never been. I just want them, uh, you know, because, you know, that also means that, you know, the Diamondbacks could have moved there. Um, Coyote, you know, the Cardinals. Cardinals, Cardinals were probably staying put anyway, but, but you know, they could have, could have done, could have done it too. <sighs> I'm hoping that uh, the governor of Connecticut uh, can work something out, um, and and he says that they have something ready to go. And it's like, like if you're Gary Bettman, would you not take that offer? I I think you should take, I think you should listen and just put and bring the Whalers back. And shout out to the Carolina Hurricanes. You know that they, they've done. A tremendous job with Eric Stahl winning that cup in 2006. And, you know, in Jordan Stahl now being the captain, um, they certainly have proven themselves to be an excellent sports franchise in Raleigh. So the Sunbelt Sun Belt teams can work, you know, but there's always going to be that one area that's just like, can't do it. Can't do it. And... And I do think it was a mistake to move the original Winnipeg Jets to uh, Phoenix back in the day, and and uh, and maybe and maybe certain things would have happened, and maybe Timo Solani doesn't move to the, the Ducks or whatever back in the day. But but I think he really was. But I think overall, it's going to be great for the NHL if. Arizona goes to Quebec or Hartford more than anything else. Um, maybe, and and Houston, you know, they don't have to worry. They can still keep them in the West, Western Conference, if they go to Houston. And Detroit can, you know, you know freeload in, in the East if they so want to. 
<sighs> yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed this segment of me ranting on TV schedules and uh, the potential move for the Coyotes. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe, uh, five stars if you think it's worth it, write a little review, and share this with your friends. With that being said, peace out.